Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be continuing with our beginner level character course on how to create this little monster game character in Blender. In this fifth installment, we will start off by adding some color by using the painting tools, then bake the normal map to transfer the texture of our high poly model to our low poly retopologized one, and then bake the ambient occlusion map to transfer the lighting and shadow information from our high poly to low poly as well. As I mentioned before, this course is a nine part series on a game character workflow. Link to the playlist should be above or below or to the side if you're just jumping in now. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, to start off, I'm going to switch over to the texture painting tab here. It looks very similar to the UV editing tab, but instead we have some painting tools here on the side. I'm going to put my cursor up here in the top left corner until it turns into a little white cross. And then I'm going to left click and pull down to create a new window. Then back up to the top left corner and click on the window type pull down menu. And then I'm going to select the shader editor. Now we can see the shader nodes of the material that is currently on our character from the previous video. We don't want the checkered UV grid pattern anymore, so I'm going to select the image texture node here and delete it. Now up here, I'm going to change from texture paint mode to object mode. Then I'm going to select the main body of the character since that's where I want to start with adding color. Then let's change back to texture paint mode. Now when a material turns pink, it generally means that Blender is expecting an image texture but can't find it. And that's because we deleted the UV grid image texture we had assigned to this material before. To fix this, let's add a new image texture node again by going over to the little plus sign over on the right, click and select base color from the menu that pops up. I'm gonna increase the map size to 2048 by 2048 and untick alpha as that relates to transparency, which I'm not gonna be using here. Now you'll see that we have a new image texture node with a new image texture called Little Monster Base Color over on the left. Okay, so now let's add in the base color of our character. I'm going to click on the fill bucket here first, then over on the right in the color picker section. I'm going to click on the swatch and pick a color for the main part of his body. Here I'm going to go with a yellowish orange. So I have this exact color for later reference. I'm going to click on new in the color palette section and then click on the plus sign here. I'm going to press Z for the shading pie menu and select rendered so we can see the colors. Then I'm going to click on the body of our character to fill it in. You can click over here on the left and select our new base color map so we can see it in the UV form as well. To speed up the painting part, sometimes it helps to lower the subdivision levels in the viewport of the multi-resolution modifier. Now I'm going to add in the base color for the other parts of the model. So changing back to object mode, then selecting the tongue, switch back to texture paint mode, and with the fill bucket still selected, select a pinkish color, and then click on the tongue in the viewport. Then the same thing with the eyebrows. and the rest I'm gonna keep white. Okay, so painting the eyes, let's select the eyes in object mode. Then switch to texture paint mode. Now over on the left, I'm gonna to switch to the paintbrush tool. Now over on the right, I'm gonna pick a dark brown color for the iris. Now back over to the left on the UV map, we can actually paint on this part as well. As I do, you can see the colors show up in the viewport on the right. This brush is a little bit fuzzy on the edges and I want it to be a little bit sharper. To fix this, I'm gonna go to the fall off menu here and select constant, then F to increase the brush size until it's a little bit bigger than the iris here on the UV map, and then click to fill it in. And now for the pupil, I'm going to select a black color, F to make the brush a little bit smaller, and then left click to fill it in. Now to give the subtle effect of the eyes being reflective, I'm going to select a white color, then back to the fall off section, I'm going to select custom, then pull the control points of the graph here until they are flat like this, which gives the brush really soft edges. Now I'll draw in some soft white spots like this to give it a cartoon shiny look.
If you want to make it even softer, you can click on the Soften tool to really blur the edges even more. Okay, now let's color in the fun pattern we did earlier by painting some spots. So I'm going to select the body, then switch to texture paint mode. I'm going to select a purple color and then start basically coloring in the pattern we sculpted in the earlier videos. Pretty straightforward, I hope. I did some lighter purple on the smaller spots on the outer edges. I also painted in some toes and fingernails, just some darker yellow for the nail bed, and then some lighter yellow for the cuticle and nail edge. and then some soften brush to take away the hard edges. Obviously, you can paint your character how you want. Feel free to experiment. The colors and patterns here don't have any bearing on the steps going forward. I did some highlights on the horns and some orange highlights on the fingers and toes, as well as some green outlines around the spots as you can see here. Okay, so with the colors done, let's do some baking. This allows us to transfer the details of the high poly sculpted mesh with 3 million tries to the low poly retopologize mesh with much less. So you can see as I toggle the multi-resolution modifier on and off, the poly count changes drastically down in the bottom right, and alongside it, we lose a lot of the sculpting details we added earlier. Without the modifier, the character looks very flat. In order to preserve this, we can bake. So to bake, let's click over here on the left window, and then press Shift A, then Search, then type Image to add in an image texture node, then click New here. I'm going to name it Little Monster Normals change the size to 2048 by 2048 to match our color map, untick alpha since we don't need transparency here, and then click the 32-bit float here as this improves the quality of the normal map. Now down here we can switch to our newly created normal map. It's just black right now until we bake. So over on the right, change the viewport subdivision level of the multi-resolution modifier to zero. Do this for all of the objects that have a multi-resolution modifier on them. Make sure that no other modifiers are added to the objects. They should only have a multi-resolution modifier. If there is any other modifier on them, make sure to apply it or delete it. The baking will not work otherwise. Okay, so with all of the multi-resolution modifiers set to zero in the viewport, let's go to the render tab and change the render engine to cycles. Now back to the Render tab, and then down to the Bake section. Now let's select all the objects with the Multi-Resolution modifier. Don't select any objects without a Multi-Resolution modifier or with other modifiers on them. The objects selected must all have only a Multi-Resolution modifier on them, or this will not work. Then click on the Bake from Multi-Res button. Now with all the objects selected, make sure to click on the Image Texture node on the left that has the newly created Normals map to make it actively selected. It should have a white border around it. Then click on the bake button on the right. Now you should see some purple colors come up on the UV map on the left. 
Now I'm going to switch back to EV. And over on the left, let's shift A, search, and type normal. And add in a normal map node and connect it up like this. I'm just going to turn down the intensity of the background color here to 0 0.1. And then turn on some of the lights I have added in back on. You can see as I connect and disconnect the normal map to the principal BSDF, the sculpt details appear and disappear on our low poly model. So even though our model only has 4,000 tries, we get the details from our 3 million try model. This is pretty awesome for animations and games as it makes things run a lot smoother. Okay, so if you're gonna go for a really low poly model, you may wanna just leave this as is. There are some small artifacts on the eyebrows and the model looks a little bit too blocky for me. So I'm actually just gonna increase the subdivision level on each of the multi-resolution modifiers and then apply it. This will increase our poly count a little bit, but it's still low enough, it should be okay for a game. Plus I just think it looks a little bit better. Okay, so you can see here, there are some kind of nasty looking bumps from our high poly sculpt that just didn't translate very well to the normal map. To fix this, I like to take the soften brush over in the left viewport and soften the edges a bit so it looks a little bit better. You may not need to do this depending on how your map turned out. Okay, so let's bake the ambient occlusion map now. This map will hold the light and shadow information of our character. So like before, let's shift A, search, and add in a image texture node. Click new, and I'm gonna name it Little Monster AO. Now back over to the render tab again, let's change it back to cycles. I'm going to increase the intensity of our background color to 1.0 again, and turn off the lights I have in the scene. I find this gives a slightly cleaner result. Now let's select all the objects of our model. down to the bake section, untick bake from multi-res, and then change the bake type to ambient occlusion. Now with all of our objects selected, click over on the image texture node with our newly created ambient occlusion image texture to make it actively selected. Then click bake over on the right. This may take a while, it took a few minutes for my computer. When it's done, you should have something like this. You can see when I connect it up to the color of the principled BSDF, we have some shadow information of our character saved to this map. Let's mix it now with our color map. So just press Shift A, search, type mix, and add in a mix RGB node. Connect up the color inputs like this. Change the blend mode to multiply. And then you can change the factor slider here to change the amount of shadow that comes through. To have even more control over how the shadows mix, you can press Shift A, search, type color ramp, and add in a color ramp node. Connect it up like this. Now you can adjust the sliders here to further increase the intensity of the shadows and get your desired look. And that's it for this video. Hopefully you have a model that looks something like this with some nice fun colors, textures, and shadow maps. This looks okay for me, so I'm gonna pull out my to-do list and call part five done. In the next video, in part six, we will build a custom rig for Unity so we can animate our character and port it into the game engine. Just one shout out this week, shout out to Air Pado Tunes on Instagram, who is a cartoon character artist. He sculpted a nice stylized high poly shape to start off. Then he retopologized a low poly version so that he could project the high poly details. And then finally added in some nice colors and textures to finish things off. 
Check out his link tree for more information. Great job, man. If you'd like to be featured here, just tag me somewhere and I'll put you in my next video. Feel free to ask questions below. I try to answer all of them and sometimes I actually help. Yeah. If you want to share your art or ask a question, I have a little group on Facebook going. Link is below. Or you can just hit me up on social media somewhere. I love seeing your guys' stuff. I have Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Twitch, Gumroad, and Udemy as well. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I hope it helped, and see you in the next one.